Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. So it's been a little too long since I did a coffee chat. So realized today is the day and this needs to happen. Uh, got a lot of interviews light up later today. Um, some amazing, awesome interviews to share with you guys coming up soon. Really excited for what I get to share. Um, it's been a long time coming, some of these interviews. And um, I am honored and humbled that you guys have sent me so many emails and instant messages and private messages and everything about the queen's death, thinking that I am connected to some underground knowledge base of funeral service, that I would know all the things that are happening with the queen's preparation, with queen's funeral. I don't. These are not in my country even. So I am interviewing my friend Matthew Uden this week to share with you. He is in the London area. Um, he is going to have hopefully all of the good details for you about the Queen's funeral and about her preparation and kind of how it works there um, because I don't know all of that. So I'm excited to learn along with you about how they're caring for the Queen. Um, so good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Coffee time. Cheers to everybody. Cheers. So, and I had, I did a live the other day with Josh, um, sharing about vault information and one of the funniest comments to me and the person said, LOL. So I know they weren't being a jerk. Um, they said, you should just title this video. I want to do a video with my boyfriend. So here we are. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if I'm hanging out with my silver fox and why not do a video? And he has 27 years knowledge about burial vaults. Why wouldn't I use that to share with you guys? It's a, it's a win-win situation, right? <laughs> so gonna always go with that part of it. Um, Hearst Fest is coming up this weekend as well. Uh, Josh and I'll be going and walking around for a little while, at least at Hearst Fest going to do recording and do some interviews like I have in the past on this channel, going to probably go live for a little while over on the Ick Factor channel as we wander around and we'll see what we see. What I love about Hearst Fest is the common denominator is hearses and it is the widest range of hearses you have ever seen um, from goth to standard to funeral home to old classics, you name it. Um, typically there's the Ghostbuster hearse. There's um, the gentleman that's bringing the Asian hearse again. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out my video from 2019. I think was the last time that we did hearse fest and interviewed him and told all about his hearse. Super cool. I'm going to hopefully chat with my buddy, Jeremy, who has my favorite hearse ever so far. Uh, it's Kelly green. It's gorgeous. It has like a lifts on it and it shoots flames. How cool is that? Right? So good morning, everyone. Um, yeah. And I'm battling the sunshine. I'm not going to complain about sunshine. Trainer made a huge mistake when moving the vault. Oh, Samuel. Yeah. Samuel had his first day of vault installation going on. Um, we will not be getting married anytime soon. So, um, you know, I'm just out of a marriage over a year ago and um, just figuring out life. So it's nice to have somebody who is so easy to be with and get along with and um, figure out the next stage of life with, but I'm still just in my own kind of zone. So it's, it's been good. It's been good to move slowly, but I would love to get married again. I like, I like being a wife. I like that role and everything. So that's kind of just me. Um, Angela, you just messed a little catching up on some stuff. And I will be going to the NFDA convention, the National Funeral Directors Association convention in Baltimore in October. So there's going to be a lot of videos of products and things that are on the um, floor. So the convention floor, we go and walk and everybody from around the world brings all their products and we get to check them all out. So I'm going to do a lot of little videos there probably go live there as well on my channel and maybe again on Ick Factor because Josh is going with me. 
Um, we both know the industry and we both know so much about it. So it's really good to see it from different perspectives. Also going to hopefully John and Ryan and Brian will all be there. And we are hopefully going to do a beer with the boys in person to do some chatting. We're going to try and do it where we actually have people watching us like in person while we're doing it. So we'll see what happens. Who knows? Who knows? It's hard to plan when you're not in the town that it's going to be in. Um, and then Miss Joelle's going to be there too, the grave woman and all sorts of people. So all sorts of things. I, I don't even know. It's hard to plan ahead for that. It's going to be, you know, uh, everybody from around the world coming together at one. I found element. So yes, the main question. So here's where this stems from. I just want to get your input on funeral home advertising. I personally am not against it, but wouldn't reputation in your community be the best form? I live close to two larger multi-location funeral homes who do yellow pages and they sponsor rooms in local retirement homes. But radio or TV ads, which is fine with me. I do have a problem with some of the radio or TV ads being a little too corny. You know, how do you get not corny when it comes to funeral home ads? I have seen some really excellent ones, excellent, excellent ones that have actually made me go, wow, that is good. A lot of what I see billboard wise is just the cheap cremation advertisement. Call us, we can cremate your loved one for $14 or, you know, that's not legit, but that's kind of some of what I see. However, yeah, you get the people who do the, you know, people are dying to get in here and they use the puns that everybody says to us all the time, kind of back at you. But then if we use them ourselves, we're the dorky, ridiculous ones. So it's kind of a fine line. Um, I think advertising, you, you have to advertise. Nowadays, people do not just go to their one community funeral home and just call them. There is that... Um, portion of the society that now shops everything and they will go an extra 30 minutes out of their way to go someplace different and better and you know more accommodating especially if maybe a corporation has bought the funeral home in their town and they still want to go to somewhere that's owned locally they may drive to a different community to go to a different funeral home so it it, it is not just based on community so you do have to advertise you do have to connect with a consumer in a certain way and TV, radio, print ads, all those things are ways to do it. And people like when funeral homes are active in their communities by putting advertisements at, you know, softball games, baseball games, you know, um, church bulletins, things like that. So it's an advertisement, even though it's a sponsorship of that team or that church or, or whatever it is. So do you consider that an advertisement or do you see that as a sponsorship as which what it is? Um, yeah. Name recognition. Exactly. Leo name recognition is crucial. Yeah. There are some sketchy funeral home stuff out there. Have you guys seen, I think SNL did some like parody, funeral home stuff. I don't remember it being very funny. <laughs> I remember it being pretty tacky um, and almost to push the envelope a little too much. Um, Mitzi, so I am all queen questions in case you missed it. Everything to do with the queen will be in a different video. I'm interviewing a British funeral director friend of mine um, this week, going to put that video out this weekend to share as much information as I can with you guys. Have you done a video on embalming fluid as far as types and the advancement since first invented? I haven't really done a history of it, um, Nick, but I've done kind of a two minute quick introduction to it. Um, I have a gentleman who is, you know, if you can deem yourself a professional embalmer, he is it. He is very well known in the business and was a fluid um, company salesperson for years and years and years, a stellar embalmer, and he lives not too far from me, which is nice, and has said he would love to do a video. So hopefully that will be coming here soon. Thanks for joining Rosemary. When my grandma died, they put her in the ground before my family got to leave the graveside. Why would this happen? It was so cool to see my grandpa's well. So 
um, Kayla, your family might have requested that or you were taking too long. <laughs> I hate to say that, but depending on the type of cemetery, if it's a larger cemetery and they are back to back funerals, they got to keep moving. They can't wait for you to like chitty chat at the graveside and leave like maybe a small country cemetery could. They got to keep moving. And so they're going to do what they got to do and just have you step out of the way and roll with it. Do you think being in the same industry has made the relationship easier? Definitely. I don't, well, let me put that. I don't think it's made it easier, but I feel like we skipped the first three date conversations where you talk about your business and what you do and trying to get the other person to understand your daily life and the mental behind it and everything. Like we know all the same people when it comes to a lot of the business. We know what we both do all day, every day. We don't have to catch each other up on some of that part of our life. And I've known Josh for 20 some years very casually just seeing him at the cemetery and stuff. But that I think has really helped. And we do talk about work, but we also don't need to talk about all the little idiosyncrasies of it because we know them already, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah. They did my father as well and I actually took the casket. Oh, that's not good. Carrie, can you do a meet and greet in Baltimore? I don't know if I'll have time for sure. Um, and what I would like to do is if we can do the Beer with the Boys live taping in a space that is kind of like a meet and greet and you can come watch it live. If you have any recommendations of maybe a spot, um, the convention is going to be at the huge convention center right down there. And, um, it's finding a space. I don't know where spaces are that could maybe facilitate having us set up to do a recording and also everybody hear us. So it would kind of be a really unique setup and also not be too loud that you can't hear. So I'm not sure what that looks like. Um, we're just, we keep throwing around the ideas, but, since all four of us are going to finally be in the same place, we figured we, we should probably make use of this time and do something with it. Um, I have never met John in person. John, you guys love John, and I cannot wait to give him the biggest hug. Um, and Ryan and Brian, I haven't seen in a little while, so I can't wait to just see them and catch up with everybody. Ooh, hold on. The sunshine is. There we go. I've seen bodies viewed on their motorcycles. Funny you should ask that. Today I am interviewing an extreme embalmer. So that's one of the videos coming soon. So yeah, I really, um, summer's kind of my lull with my channel. Not as many videos. I'm with my kids a little more. And so hit fall. And this is when I can gear back up into work mode. Um, hardcore. So this is when more and more videos are going to start popping and hitting. So I'm excited about this. Um, there's a guy in Austin and he puts cremated remains in paintings. They're beautiful. And I'm hoping to interview him coming up too. Like there's so many, like I make lists upon lists. You guys don't know how many times I redo my list. Like things like right now, things to do. And this is just like what I would like to do in a week. It gets a little crazy. Um, and I love it. I just, there's not enough hours in the day for me to dive into everything. And I get as excited learning about this stuff as you guys do when it's something that I don't do every day and is not my norm. And it's something new that comes within the business. I get excited about it and learning about it. So yay. Um, Bren B, my son is going, son-in-law is going into hospice today. He's only 36, not looking forward to this process. I'm so sorry. That's way far too young to be going through this and for your daughter and our son, um, and the rest of the family. That's, I'm so sorry. I'm about 
prepaid, all arrangements paid for. Do not want my family having to deal with it since done this since biblical times. Yeah, George, um, I try and at least give you guys the base. <laughs> Always stick up with my two minutes and try and do some lives and throw in some other stuff. And um, I definitely, definitely need more. Brandon, that's awesome. Yeah, so hoping to come to Austin maybe January, February. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. It's also my parents' 50th anniversary in January. So I'm gonna do some, we're gonna be doing something um with them for that as well. So yeah, it's wild. It's wild. I'm gonna have a video, um, probably a five minute on tattoos with cremated remains in them. You may not like what I hear or what I say. <laughs> um, yeah. So what questions do you guys have? Throw some questions at me. Let me grab my folder. Oh, man. You guys always. Um... Oh, and there's a kid in my area, too. The one that cleans the headstones. I haven't been able to connect with him yet. Um There's some vault questions. We'll save those for Josh. What happens to the closing a deceased person came in wearing if they aren't soiled? They are offered back to the family. If the family doesn't want them, then we throw them away. What happens if someone dies sitting up? Can they be straightened out? Of course. So you don't rigid, your body doesn't rigid up. Rigor mortis doesn't stay forever. Um, it sets in within about two hours of death and it's gone after like 36 to 48 hours. So your body goes back to super loosey goosey as you're decomposing. So if you've been sitting in that chair too long, you're gonna be super loosey goosey when your family finds you anyway. But I think it's almost easier to take someone out of a chair to put them onto a cot for a removal because you almost just like swing them out. <laughs> One, you know, one person on each side and kind of swing them out, but it depends on how rigid their body is. And yes, you just straighten them right out. So rigor mortis loosens up. We say break the rigor mortis. We're not breaking anything. We're just making that muscle mobile again by dislocating the things that are binding up in the muscle. Any visits planned to come to Anchorage? You know what? I want to go everywhere. I want to travel and see everything. So I would love to come to Alaska. Um, if we can set up some hunting, <laughs> Josh will like, go book it right now. Um, if we can find something for him to shoot, hunt, or track down, he would love to come. I'm the one who keeps winging on about Uden's being my local funeral directors. Looking forward to that interview. Love to all from Southeast London. Um, well, love to you, Patsy, and the country for, you know, what's going on right now. It's a big, big deal. Um, my girls were asking this morning, you know, like, how long has the queen been the queen? Like, why, you know, has it been a couple of years? I'm like, it's been 70, I think it was, what, 70 years, 241 days since she was 25 years old. Like there's many, many people in the country who have never known a queen but her. So it is a big changing of the guard and a big loss to the country. And she was very well loved for the most part. So if we question a funeral home, would you check into complaints filed against them? Yes. Do your research. You know, it's, you're not visiting like a convenience store. You're not just, this is entrusting someone with your loved one. Now I know there's these mental, these different vantage points that you come in with where, okay, we want something cheap to dispose of a body, which is what people want, even though that's not what they want to say it as. That's what a lot of people want. But this is your loved one. Like this is your most beloved monarchy, not monarchy, a um, matriarch or patriarch maybe of your whole family. And you're, try, you're trying to find a place to entrust to them to. Do research. Ask around. 
check out their business license online. Check out their Better Business Bureau review. Don't trust Google reviews and Yelp reviews and all that crap because anybody can post a bad anything. It doesn't mean it's at all factual. At all. Um, but things that have been sent to the state, um, have they had to go before the review board? Do a little due diligence. If you get a bad feeling, go with your gut. Your gut is there for a reason. That visceral reaction that you have to things, follow it. Have you ever had a sitting body you could not straighten out? No. Nope. They just straighten. Um, sometimes they are twisted a little, but you just straighten them the best you can. And then sometimes you can't fully get them into the position you want. But most of the time, yes. If the pallbearers drop the casket, will it open? Possibly. Possibly. That's why everybody says, why do you lock a casket? For that reason. <laughs> It helps to ensure it's not going to pop open, but the back hinges can break. Most caskets, that if you see a video of a casket being dropped and open, a lot of times it's the back hinge that opens, not the front. The front's locked, but that back hinge can pop. Sexy Sergeant, good question. Is the queen's body really in the casket? We will never know. Morning, Charlie. Why would I had turn black when the person, um, Kayla, what are you saying? Uh, you're missing a letter or something in there. Rosemary, as long as you are under hospice at your home or you die in a medical facility, you do not need an autopsy. If they find you at home and there is a large pre-existing health condition, they will put that into the equation if you're not under hospice and you're not in a medical facility, but they may still require an autopsy. So you need to be under hospice or in a medical facility if you for sure don't want an autopsy. I know it's like, as it's coming up, I'm battling the sun. About two months ago, my coworker ended his life at work. He hung himself and his eyes were popping out. How do they go back in? Um, sometimes they may not, but just even slight pressure on them may relieve and, and place them back in. Does excessive blood clotting make it harder to embalm? Yes. If the blood settles, it's hard to get it back in motion, especially if the clots get really, really big. That brings up another thing. I get more emails from you guys. So aside from the queen, which is the big topic right now, this whole blood clotting, white clots um, that there's some articles out about. You guys send me that so many times wondering about it. Um, so going to have a video coming out about that here soon to answer that whole thing. Um, because, oh my goodness, last week I answered, I had like 25 emails and seven of them, seven were that question. Um, why would a hand turn black? Hands are don't have a lot of like fatty tissue in them, so they're going to dehydrate really quickly, and it really just depends on the scenario. You also lose circulation in your hands and feet if someone's laying dying for quite some time. That blood is going to it's going to stop going all the way out to your extremities, and it's going to stay in the central areas more because your heart's not strong enough sometimes to pump out. So your feet and your legs are going to start turning darker colors and your hands and the circulation is going to get bad. Sometimes with embalming, you can get that circulating and get that color to clear. If the person's been laying dead for a while, it may just stain dark like that and you can't get it to change. So I, I don't know the scenario that you're talking about. So there's a lot of factors there. Um, but... It could be, you know, just depends on, on what it is. I've looked for mortuary transport positions on funeral home websites. I never see anything. Yes, 
Go call funeral homes, go visit funeral homes, drop off your resume, call local transport companies. There are a lot of funeral homes who use transport companies and don't use their own staff anymore. So, you know, look for those as well. They're not like, I know my local one posts those positions on Indeed and, and things, um, you know, for hiring. So um, any fears besides werewolves and tryptophobia? <laughs> uh, I have a lot of weird, wacky um, kind of fears or or weird things. Yeah, werewolves growing up was one of the few like monster things or anything. And we were actually, we we're in Menards the other day. It's a huge, like a Home Depot or um, Lowe's. I don't know what everybody has in their area or the countries. And they had all the Halloween stuff out and they had these like 10, 12 foot tall motion <laughs> censored things. And they had these two werewolves. And I was like, well, oh, they're, I know they're fake but still something in me triggered <laughs> by it. And I go back to, we used to have this movie and it was these little compilations of old black and white shows, like horror clips. And there was some Vincent Price from the pitch, the pit and the pendulum and like um, just all these things. And there was one scene where Michael Landon from the movie, I don't even know the title where he turns into the werewolf. Do you guys know what movie this is? somebody tell me what movie this is, um, where he turns into the werewolf and he goes behind, he's up on a stage or something at the school and he turns into a werewolf and he attacks a girl. Scared the poop out of me. I have no idea why that one little scene of everything terrified me, but it just like stuck with me. So it was the one thing I was, I was kind of fearful of. Mm, not an American werewolf in London. Nope. That's a different movie. This is where he's like a teenager at home and turns into a werewolf. Um, oh, the Amish community. Okay, first of all, let me <clears throat> roll back up. Could you request to be there 24-7 if your child dies? So Vivian, yeah, like if my kid died, I'm not leaving them ever alone at that funeral home. I, I can't in my mind think of doing that. But I would think it would be a healthier to disconnect, maybe. I don't know. But yes, if somebody wants to stay there with their kid, yep, I'm not telling them no. If they want to take their kid home, yep, they have every right to. I've had people do that before, too, with a baby. They took the baby home until burial. So there's different scenarios. But yes, there's, there, there's not rules. It is their loved one. The funeral home may not like it. Why wouldn't they open the casket for the royals for everyone to see? It's for the to ever have pictures of the deceased. Well, it, it might just be their tradition. It's not traditional to do viewing in England. Like, that's not the tradition. They don't embalm a ton. It's heavy cremation. Um, so to have a public viewing would not be the norm or the tradition there. In a murder case, does the family have to pay for the autopsy? No. Yes, the Amish community is quite fascinating. I have been to one Amish funeral. It's not like big right here, but we do have tons of Amish within like an hour to two hours of here. Um, they have, just like any community, it's not like their specific cemetery, but for their community, that's where they bury. Like we have a Native American cemetery here and not too far, hoping Friday, um, around dinner time here. So around 435 to do a live on the ick factor at the native American cemetery. But you know, they can then allow whoever to be buried there, but you have to live in that community. It's pretty traditional. You know, you go way back and they had um, like some of the areas near me, there's the German cemetery. You didn't, you don't just have to be German to be buried there, but it was more traditional. They have the Polish cemetery. They've got you know, the English cemetery, but now years later, communities aren't divided as much like that. What made you want to become a mortician? I tried it and it was a job in high school and just comfort level. Ooh, that jumped down. <laughs> I 
All right, sexy sergeant, let's talk about this. My uncle passed from cirrhosis of the liver, excessive drinking. His daughter found him three days later. The funeral home said we couldn't see him because of OSHA. I call BS. OSHA doesn't say you can't see bodies. <laughs> That's total crap. And the cas casket must stay sealed. So they can tell you that the person is unviewable. You have every right to see your loved one. If that funeral home doesn't want to allow you, go to a different funeral home. They can't keep you from seeing your loved one. They can tell you it's not a great idea. They can tell you it's pretty ugly of a scene, um, but they cannot keep you from it. Yes, a sealed casket is going to be the best thing in that situation because um, dying by excessive drinking can be very, very horrific. A lot of blood. Um a lot of edema in the body, especially with the cirrhosis, you can get that edema. So there's all these scenarios. It just depends what they look like. But OSHA doesn't have any part of that. That's that's not an OSHA thing. So I'm going to call BS. Someone can call me and tell me, Carrie, you can't say that. But that's BS. That's not an OSHA thing. No. Um, but I'm betting he did not look great at all. So they probably wasn't going to be a good thing for them to view him. But if they needed to see part of him, even looking at his hand or something. But I don't know the scenario. Um, do you like horror movies? You know, I used to like them way more than, than now. Mm. It is this week. It's super fall like Sandy. It's so, so good. So good. Um, Michael Landon, no, so it's a Michael Landon movie. It's not the Michael J. Fox movie where he was a teenage werewolf. Um, no, it's not teenage werewolf, guys. It's Michael Landon movie from way back. I want to say it was probably even black and white. Um, Landon werewolf movie. We're just, we're just going to do this. Um, oh, I was a teenage werewolf. Was that like the original and then they remade it? It was from 1957 and then they must have remade it. Yeah, Teen Wolf was the Michael J. Fox and then I was a teenage werewolf. I don't know why, guys, but that movie scared the poop out of me. Just, I don't, yeah, who knows? Who knows? You know, the fears and things. Um, if you have a body that was from a fentanyl overdose, do you handle the body or is it the coroner? Um, they would go for an autopsy, more than likely, first. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, it's good to educate yourself and to know kind of what's up with stuff. Do they normally use vault in England? No, they don't. Um, it's very traditional not to use a vault. I have done, I have not personally been the lead funeral director on a home funeral. No, but I've had people do it. You know, the biggest thing you run into is that the caskets don't fit through the doors. So I know the one they had to take it in through a window because homes are not made with wide enough doors. A lot of times, especially the older homes, um, kind of like the fifties era, like inside the doors are, we can't even get cots through them, let alone get a casket in. Bye, David. Just find you life. Hey. Um, yeah, they might use cooling slabs to keep the body in good shape. It just depends. Um, but we'll find out more. So the queen questions, we're going to be asking a British funeral director that um, later this week. You know, Michael Landon was hot. He was a good looking guy. And, um, it just makes me angry that he was such a heavy smoker and kind of did a, his own death by, you know, smoking so much. Is body removal done the same pertain to funeral homes and corners? Yeah. And sometimes it's the same company that goes and does them. I prepared to have my body cremated at my chosen funeral home. However, if I was to die while on vacation, will my family have to pay to be cremated in that state? Um, so your fund is there. 
your fund is all set and it's there to use, the contract of the locked in pricing with that funeral home is only with that funeral home. So always have that funeral home be your first call. So let's say you're traveling and you die. Make sure your family calls that funeral home first. They will then contact and find someone to hopefully do it at a pricing that will match up to what's in your contract. They will get a um, professional fee rather than what you would go in and pay. So don't go through a funeral home local. Allow your funeral home that you have pre-funded with to contract to where your body is. Coming to Australia, that just sounds like a horrible plane ride. <laughs> I would love to. I think going anywhere just sounds fun. I would love to travel and go places, but whew, that plane ride would be brutal. Isn't traveling around with a blanket after his death the main reason we have embalming today? It is not the main reason. The main reason when it started was because of the Civil War and getting soldiers home to their loved one. That's when really the beginning of embalming as we know it here in our country began. Because soldiers were traveling, we needed to prepare them on the battlefield and get them back home to where their family was. That's really when it initiated and became a thing more so um, because of how many bodies were being embalmed during that time. Have you ever embalmed a body and it began to decompose? Bodies are always decomposing. Embalming is a temporary preservation. So we are praying that we can get them through the funeral service and everything sometimes because bodies are so decomposed right after death sometimes because of how long your heart's being kept going by different things, but the rest of you is already decomposing. It's a crazy thing to even say, but it does happen. So it is a temporary preservation. Embalming is not to preserve your loved one forever at all. No, if anybody promises you that, they're full of it as well. Call in the BS meter. I feel like I need like a red flag so I can throw red flags today about things that maybe funeral directors promise or say. But um, yeah, don't go crazy with that. Um, what happened to all the bodies from Katrina? They were cared for and eventually buried or cremated, but they were all cared for. And the ones that kind of came up and got uprooted from cemeteries, they were identified, recasketed, reburied. Um, all right, I'm going to do this one last question by Tay. What would be the timeline that embalming is required? Let's say you have to keep a body for a week or so before viewing. Would it be needed then? Yes. So embalming is not a, and nowhere do you have to be involved by law. Unless it is after a certain time period and you want to have a viewing. Some states do have a law that you have to be cremated, buried, or embalmed within a certain time period. Know the laws of your state. But the reason funeral homes require embalming is to control how the person looks. Mother Nature is going to win always. We just don't know how she's going to attack, what she's going to do to that body, and in what time period. So we embalm so we can try to control how that person is going to look for the duration that we have them. And we're getting more and more and more requests to hold bodies longer and longer and longer so that it can accommodate the family. Oh, we're going on vacation. Oh, we're going to do this in a couple weeks. Um, and I'm talking five to six weeks sometimes. Bodies were not meant to be embalmed and held on to that long. Embalming can only do so much. St cool storage can only do so much. E prayer is going to be the only last thing we got. So we do what we can, but when a death occurs in your family, stop. Stop. Stop and honor that person. Death is not made to accommodate your schedule. Stop. Right now the world is stopping and watching everything going on with the queen. Can you imagine if her family said, yeah, we're going to just wait a couple weeks until... You know, the king has been, you know, fully coronated in or whatever you call that, initiated in. We're just going to wait. 
we're going to wait. Sorry, guys, but we're going to wait. Can you even imagine? That would be like pure chaos. Just stop. Honor the life. Take care of what you need to take care of with them. Then go into the next phase of your life. But this whole waiting four to five weeks, come on, guys. That's crazy. You're expecting miracles out of funeral directors to do that as well. Oh, okay. I'm going to say one last thing. Richard's asking, how come after an animal decomposition composed, the bottom jaw falls off the skull like a Lego? Because the only thing holding the bottom jaw on any of us is tissue. The only reason this is attached to the rest of your head is by a muscle. I don't know if it's the mastoid muscle or what it is, but it's just a muscle. So um, coming up, this is going to be a wild one. And I don't know how I'm going to react at this moment. I think it's going to be fascinating. So my dog, you can go back and see videos that my dog died. I think it's been three, maybe four years ago now. And um, Ralph. And we buried him at my parents' house. Well, my parents are now building onto their home. So it's more of a long-term till their death home. <clears throat> where my dog is is where we need to bury or dig to build foundation for the new expansion. So we are going to be disinterring my dog. And we have no, I have no idea what we're getting into. We're going to disinter him and then cremate him. And so I'm going to just video the whole thing. Why not? Why not? Um, at this moment, I'm thinking of it, you know, scientifically and how fascinating it's going to be and see what's there and see what's left. I don't know emotionally how I'm going to react in the moment. My girls are all for this and think it's going to be super interesting. But yeah, send all the Josh wine, please. <laughs> Send it all. <laughs> Who knows what I'm going to be feeling? But um, I think it'll be an interesting thing. So I think that is still going to happen this fall, even. That we're going to be digging up my dog. Digging him up. Crazy, right? Crazy train. So, no, he's not in a dog casket. There are dog caskets. Yeah. Um, he, we bound him uh, with, I'm trying to remember, I think it was a sheet first and then wrapped him in his blanket that he had used for years um, that had been on top of his bed. It was like a green fleecy blanket, I believe. I'll have to look at the pictures because I took pictures of us when we buried him. And um, so all parts of him should be encased in those blankets and things. I don't know. I don't know. I just keep saying as long as there's no eyeballs left, that will be what kind of creeps me out. But I don't know. Will it be just bones left? Will there be hair still? I don't know. I don't know. We're, I guess we're going to find out. So, and if you guys want to watch the videos, you guys can find out too. I don't know if I'll do it as a live. I might just do it as a live. Just go for it because why not? Um, but, oh, buddy, this could be interesting. Could be interesting. I mean, who does this, right? Me. Yeah, I guess. So, well, thank you guys. Um yeah, keep an eye on the channel. If you don't get notifications, click on notifications to get notifications. I will tell you guys, though, I took a picture of it one day. I happened to see an analytic for the channel, and it's 8% or something stupidly low like that. It's like 8% of subscribers who are signed up for notifications actually get notifications. I have no control over that. So just pray you're part of the eight, I guess, to make sure you get notified when the new videos come up. Thank you and watch for some really cool videos coming up in the next two weeks. Bye guys.